Hi, welcome back to Advanced Software Engineering. Today we will talk about reliability. So, a quality engineer walks into a bar and orders a beer. He orders two beers. He orders 999,999 beers. A second quality engineer walks in. She orders minus one beer. She orders a lizard. She orders a taxi. First customer walks into the bar and asks where the bathroom is, and the bar explodes. Hmm. What does that tell us about reliability? It means quality engineers, reliability engineers are the ones who should be able to look into the future and, you know, come up with all the things that could possibly ever go wrong in the system. And why is that? Well, we want to be able to trust our system. Reliability of a software system means that every time I make some kind of input, we get an expected return on that input. And when I give it the same input twice, then I would expect the same answer. And when something unforeseen happens, then I still want the system to be able to give some kind of response to that that makes sense instead of just blowing to pieces. Now that's not always so easy in practice. So what happens very often is there will be an unforeseen input or an operator makes a mistake. So at the begin, beginning of the chain in reliability is usually a human mistake. Maybe a software developer didn't think through when they were programming the system. Let's take a simple example of a monitoring system. You have security cameras installed somewhere and they have to run 24 hours. So you have surveillance all day and all night. Now, if that security system is supposed to send out a report every hour on the hour to say that everything's all right, so you can check it on your phone, you're like, all right, all the past 16 hours have been flagged okay since I left the house. Good. Now, what if your programmer forgot that from 23 o'clock, 11 p.m., in order to send out the next report, they actually had to go back to zero o'clock, to midnight, as opposed to count on to 24 and so on and so forth after that. So if such a human mistake happens, then that can lead to a system fault. The system fault means that there is something going on that is not supposed to be that way, but it doesn't show yet in the output. Now, in case that gets caught, in case I have another guard that checks, oh wait, time is now 24, that's impossible. We gotta do something, we gotta send an error message into a reset, fine. If that is not the case, then we will produce a system error. And the system error again, it could go well or it could go bad. If it goes well, then we, we get an error message saying something is wrong with the timing, uh, don't know what to do, need to run a maintenance procedure or need to call an operator to fix this or whatever else. And if that is not the case, if there is no such catch, then what we'll experience is a system failure. And system failure in that case would mean system crashes and doesn't send out anything anymore. So all of a sudden, the place we wanted to protect with the security camera is not protected anymore. It's not um, 
being recorded and it's not being reported on. So what we want to do in reliability engineering is we want to be able to avoid each of those stages. So in order to do that, the first step would be we try to avoid any of those mistakes. So we have three stages. of reliability engineering. First, we want to avoid a mistake from happening. So what we can do for that is we can use good programming, good programming guidelines, good programming standards. And that will be things like checking your input values, checking where, whether they are in a specific range or whether they adhere to a certain format. You want to check whether your guards are kept for, for certain types of data structures. You want to um, have catch statements for exceptions that would then transfer that into error messages that tell us exactly what's going on and how we need to fix it. Second one, if we can't completely avoid it, because sometimes stuff will slip through, then we will try to detect what's going on. So if we weren't able to make sense of all of those by good programming guidelines, the system fault that gets produced will result in some kind of error message being thrown back to the system at some point. And then what we can try to do is detect that specific mistake and run a maintenance procedure. If mm, our larger than 22, um, go to that procedure instead and run this part. Catch and handle exceptions. And if that doesn't fix everything either, then the third stage that we can do is tolerate if something happens. So we want our system to be fault tolerant. When things happen up here, that they won't lead to failure. so it can recover. Now, if we go back to the quality engineer joke at the beginning of this lecture, then what were those people doing? Ordering one beer, two beers, a million beers, minus one beer, ordering a lizard. They were trying out all different kinds of inputs in that bar. They even tried to order a taxi. Now we don't know from that joke whether they tried to order a taxi as in here have a drink instead of a taxi or if that was a service request but one that the bartender would expect to come in when a guest had too many beers that they would order a taxi to take them home instead. So we have all the different kinds of inputs. They obviously doesn't anticipate a customer walking into the bar and asking where the restroom is because that made the bar explode. But doing all those different types of tests up to the point where we can detect failure, that is statistical testing. And that is used a lot in reliability engineering. So we will use statistical testing and there are a number of metrics for reliability 
that we will want to have as good as possible and that we want to be able to show to our client that we can fulfill those. First one of those is the availability of the system. So uptime. And if you only have five minutes of downtime in a system per week, that amounts to quite a bit per year. And if you can avoid that, you'd rather not have it. Especially as many of our software systems now operate 24 hours and around the globe, so there is never really any time where you can take this complete system offline and run some maintenance procedures. Another one is Bofort. Probability of failure on demand. Which would be, when I ask where the bathroom is in a bar, the bar explodes. That's clearly a case of failure on demand. <laughs> and then there's a third one. It's called Rockoff. And and I always stumble across that one. For the life of me, I can never remember what Rockoff stands for. Let me look this up. <laughs> Rate of fault occurrence. So how often do faults occur in this particular system? Now, when you think back to requirements engineering, then you know that defining a metric and then a certain level that a system has to adhere to for that specific metric um, is one way of defining quality requirements. So we can use those metrics for defining quality requirements. So quality requirement for reliability could, for example, be availability of the system has to be 99% of the time. And you can break that down, how many minutes per year that means. 99% is pretty high. Now, what's the other way of defining requirements? Functional requirements. So the other way of how we can say something about the reliability of the system is to use functional requirements. And that can be something along the line of for every mm, feature that the system has implemented, there needs to be an exception handler. Now, if you take those two together, the quality requirements and the functional requirements for reliability, and you walk through your good programming guidelines and then make sure that you can still detect and tolerate all of the potential failures that you can think of in any way. And there are a lot of reference lists that you can use for things that could potentially go wrong in your system. Then you're pretty well set up for reliability if you want to take it beyond reliability and also conceive of any attacks that might be brought onto your system, that's where we get into security engineering and that's one of the upcoming lectures. <laughs>